So we've looked at repentance, we've looked at a revival, and after you get yourself cleaned up and are confessed up, you will expect at some stage the devil will come at you as a roaring lion, and here Sennacherib, due to the Lord's permissive will, has been unleashed against Israel due to her sin pre her repentance. 17, 32, 17. He wrote also a letter to Rael on the Lord God of Israel. Well, of course, that's what he wants to do. Get your eyes off the Lord and onto him. It's a type of the devil, of course. And to speak against him. That's what the Antichrist does. He's against Jesus Christ, saying, As the gods, lowercase g, of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, which was true, incidentally. Unclean spirits don't always lie. Sometimes they speak the truth. Book of Acts, they say, This man, Paul, uh, speaks the truth. He uh, points people to uh, Jesus Christ, slightly paraphrasing, and he declares the way of truth, the way of the gospel, which of course was true. Comma, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. Presumptuous, as was Satan before he fell. And Paul says, don't lay your hands on a novice, lest he also fall into the, the sin of uh, pride, the condemnation of pride. And here Sennacherib, up until now, was unstoppable. As will, be, as will be the Antichrist for a period of time, but he's now met his match. She's bitten off more than he can chew. Look at 18. And they cry with a loud voice in the Jews' speech on the people of Jerusalem, that one on the wall. It's like uh, Jesuit coagitators pretending to be conservatives coming along today, and they do this and have done, and have done since the Reformation. And uh, they speak the way that we speak as true Christians. They use our... our our, our lingo, basically, uh, they speak about being born again, as do the uh, the Mormons, and of course they are not. The Jehovah's Witnesses also offer themselves as being Christians when they are not. This is how subtle Satan is. The enemy comes from within and also without. And here you've got Gentile leaders using the Jews' speech of the people of Jerusalem, uh, that one on the wall, to affright them. That's, what the whole, that's the whole point of this, and to trouble them. They might take the city. We call this propaganda. Again, Jesuit coagitators all over YouTube, all over the world. I hope people are aware of this. Most of your conservatives online, I do believe, are Jesuit coagitators. And I'll discuss this more in a future video. And they spake against the God of Jerusalem, Antichrist, in the place of Christ against Christ, as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of of the hands of man. They want to put God in the same category as the gods of the people of the earth, which are, of course, idols. That's the ecumenical movements, plain. Come together. All faiths are the same. What unites us, let's focus on that, not on what, uh, what divides us. Of course, that will not do. And, of course, also the Pope is the head of the ecumenical movement. Another Antichrist. 20. As uh, and, and for this cause, Hezekiah the king, a good king, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven. you got two godly men coming together to pray for Israel. Hezekiah, type of Jesus Christ, our high priest praying for the church. Isaiah, a type of the Holy Ghost, praying for the church. Also, you're told to pray for leaders in the New Testament. Paul told you, as would Paul. Excuse me, Paul told you, as would Peter. And Hezekiah was a leader of the people, so you've got two apostles telling you to pray for the leaders and also to support ministries, because of course Isaiah was a prophet. If they're feeding you, feed them. 21. And the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valour, as he would do with the Antichrist and the false prophets, and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria, as he would do with those that followed the Antichrist and the false prophet during the great tribulation. Nothing new under the sun, of course. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. We say uh, he lost face. We say he got egg on his face. When he was coming to the house of his God, he is a polytheist. There's no atheists in scripture, incidentally. They that came forth of his own bowels, his own uh, children, basically, slew him there with a sword. His own family just cut him down, just like a common criminal. 17, he thinks he's king of the world. 21, he's cut down and he's now dead. Simply as, as simple as that. Shows you how quickly man can fall. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. 
Revelation 19, Christ comes back, deals with the Antichrist, the false prophets. And of course the devil is also chained for a period of time. Revelation 20 is released for one final time. That all ends in disaster and he goes back into hell and this time he never gets out. 23, and bought gifts unto the, uh, unto the Lord to Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, pitch of the second advent, king of kings, lord of lords, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. That's the whole purpose of the book, a king and a kingdom. And here, and here uh, Sennacherib, type of the devil, is destroyed, and Hezekiah, type of Jesus Christ, is exalted. During the uh, thousand-year reign, nations will bring presents to the king of kings, and if they don't, there'll be problems. And of course, for the Old Testament, Israel is a type of the church for today. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations. From thenceforth, so that will probably conclude for now. Uh, this look at Second Chronicles 30, 31, and also 32. But just to very briefly wrap up what we discussed over the last few days. Once you get yourself cleaned up, once you start to walk with the Lord, expect the devil to come at you, and he'll come at you hard. You can't be indifferent. You, on the one hand, are to be on the defensive mode, but also on the offensive mode. You've got to get up and get out and open your mouth and do something for the Lord. You can't just sit on your hands and say, well, I'm saved and I'm all good to go. There's an ongoing war and it's coming all of the time. And like I say, the enemy from within, so-called, will use your own speech. They'll say, we're Christians. And they turn around and say, well, we believe in same-sex marriage. Or we're Christians, but we believe in female priests. Or we're Christians, but we believe in the Pope as the Vicar of Christ. Or we're Christians, but we believe in baptism or a baptismal regeneration or transubstantiation or the ecumenical movement i can't stress it enough this is so prevalent online all over the world and very few people are aware of it and speaking against it and here sennacherib wants to destroy the people's faith in their king a type of jesus christ for today to stop christians following christ and start following church which is not a big problem and get people to stop reading their Bibles and start reading catechisms and creeds and following church councils, all that stuff. Or following their feelings, their emotions, speaking in tongues, uh, going to charismatic Pentecostal churches or returning to old wives' fables, all that sort of a thing. And of course, if you do that, you become bankrupt, shipwrecked and probably never get back on your feet again. But Hezekiah was faithful, as was Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. The Holy Ghost also uh, steps up. Uh, of course, Isaiah is a type of the Holy Ghost in verse 20. Also a type of a ministry fighting the good fight today. Or a good church fighting a good fight today. There are still some good churches left in the UK that are fighting a good fight. Not many, but there are some. And one final time uh, in verse 23. Many bought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem. Presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah, like I said, picture of the second advent, so that he was magnified, exalted in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. Lord of lords, king of kings, Revelation 11 speaks about Christ getting the kingdoms of this world, and once he gets his throne and his crown, he never loses it, never will he forsake it, and nobody shares his glory with anyone at any time.